read along with me. Today we're going to be reading The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. And since this is a mystery book, I want you guys to comment down below who you think um, did it in this story. So let's get into it. Chapter 1, Sunset Towers. The sun sets in the west, just about everyone knows that. But Sunset Towers faced east. Strange. Sunset Towers faced east and had no towers. This glittery, glossy apartment house stood alone on Lake Michigan, shore five stories high. Five empty stories high. On one day, it happened to be the 4th of July. A most uncommon-looking delivery boy rode around town, slipping letters under the doors of the chosen tenants-to-be. The letters were signed, Barney Northrup. The delivery boy was 62 years old, and there was no such person as Barney Northrup. Dear lucky one, here it is, the apartment you've always dreamed of, at a rent you can afford in the newest, most luxurious building on Lake Michigan, Sunset Towers. Picture windows in every room, uniform doorman, maid service, central air conditioning, high-speed elevator, exclusive neighborhood near excellent schools, etc., etc. You have to see it to believe it, but these unbelievably elegant apartments will be shown by appointment only. So hurry, there are only a few left. Call me now at 276-7474 for this once-in-a-lifetime offer. Your servant, Barney Northrup. P.S. I am also renting ideal space for doctor's office and lobby, coffee shop with entrance from the parking lot, high-class restaurant on the entire top floor. Six letters were delivered, just six. Six appointments were made, and one by one, family by family, talk, talk, talk. Barney Northrup led the tours around and about Sunset Towers. Take a look at all that glass. One-way glass, Barney Northrup said. You can see out, nobody can see in. Looking up the Wexlers, the first appointment of the day, were blinded by the blast of morning sun that flashed off the face of the building. See those chandeliers, Chris? Crystal. Barney Northrup said, slicking his black mustache and straightening his hand-painted tie in the lobby's mirrored wall. Call it this carpeting, three inches thick. Gorgeous, Mrs. Wexler replied, clutching her husband's arm as her high heels wobbled in the deep plush pile. She too managed an approving glance in the mirror before the elevator door opened. You're really in luck, Barney Northrup said. There's only one apartment left, but you'll love it. It was meant for you. He flung open the door to 3D. Now, is that breathtaking, or is that breathtaking? Mrs. Wexler gasped. It was breathtaking, all right. Two walls of the living room were four to ceiling glass. Following Barney Northrup's lead, she ooed and awed her joyous way through the entire apartment. Her trailing husband was less enthusiastic. What's this, a bedroom or a closet? Jake Wexler asked, peering to the last room. It's a bedroom, of course, his wife replied. It looks like a closet. Oh, Jake, this apartment is perfect for us, just perfect. Grace Wexler argued in a whining coup. The third bedroom was a trifle small, but it would do just fine for Turtle. And think what it means having your office in the lobby, Jake. No more driving to and from work. No more mowing the lawn or shoveling snow. Let me remind you, Barney Northrup said. The rent here is cheaper than what your old house is in upkeep. How would he know that, Jake wondered. Grace stood there. Grace stood before the front window where, beyond the road, beyond the trees, Lake Michigan lay calm and glistening. A lake view. Just wait until those so-called friends of hers with their classy houses see this place. The furniture would have been reupholstered. No, she'd buy new furniture, beige velvet, and she'd have stationery made, blue with a deco edge, her name and fancy address and swirling type across the top. Grace Windsor Wexler, Sunset Towers on the Lake Shore. Not every tenant to be was quite as overjoyed as Grace Winder Windsor Wexler. Arriving in the late afternoon, Saito Pulaski looked up and saw only the dim, warped reflections of treetops and drifting clouds in the glass face of Sunset Towers. You're really in luck, Barney Northup said for the sixth and last time. There's only one apartment left, but you'll love it. It was meant for you. He flung open the door to a one-bedroom apartment in the rear. Now, is that breathtaking, or is that breathtaking? Not especially, said Elvis Pulaski, replied as she blinked into the rays of the summer sun, sitting behind the parking lot. She had waited all these years for a place of her own, and here it was, in an elegant building where rich people lived. But she wanted a lake view. The front apartments are taken, Barney Northrop said. Besides, the rent's too steep for a secretary's salary. Believe me, you get the same luxuries here at the third of a price. At least the view from the side window was pleasant. Are you sure nobody can see in, Sidel Pulaski asked. Absolutely, Barney Northrop said. Following her suspicious stare to the mansion on the North Cliff, 
That's just the old Westing house up there. It hasn't been lived in for 15 years. Well, I'll have to think it over. I have 20 people begging for this apartment, Burning North said, lying through his buck teeth. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Whether whatever else he was, Burning North was a good salesman. One day he had rented all of Sunset Showers to the people whose names were already printed on the mailbox in an alcove off the lobby. Office, Dr. Wexler. Lobby, Theodoricus's Coffee Shop. 2C, F. Bombach. 2D, Theodoricus. 3C, Sadel Pulaski. 3D, Wexler. 4C, Who. 4D, J.J. Ford. 5, Shin Hu's Restaurant. Who are these people? These specially selected tenants? They were mothers and fathers and children. A dressmaker, a secretary, an inventor, a doctor, a judge, and, oh yes, one was a bookie, one was a burglar, one was a bomber, and one was a mistake. Barney Northrop had rented one of the apartments to the wrong person.